Hello, and welcome to episode 14 of the Physique Development Podcast, a podcast bringing you structured Q&As, deep dives on a single topic, inside looks at our team, and more. Today's episode is a deep dive on nursing. What you can expect from today's podcast is for us to deep dive into nursing, night shift, and different things you can do to make sure you're on track for your fitness goals while having a high-pressure job that you do have some limitations in. As always, it's not only our goal to supply you, the listener, with valuable insights sites on the topics or questions, but also to plant some seeds for further research and thought. Without further ado, let's get into today's topic. Today, me, Subash, will be the only one on this podcast. As you probably noticed with the intro, Austin normally does those, uh, but it is something, especially as we grow within this podcast, wanting to make sure that we're able to stay as consistent as possible, and then just having different solo episodes, whether it be on someone's area of expertise, or just being able to make sure, again, we can get that content out. So when it comes down to it, I do also want to give a shout out to a PD client. Her name is Alex Brown. Um, She is an RN and she helped me with a few of these other things that I wanted to get from a real life nurse. I do work with a lot of nurses, a lot of people who are on night shift for different jobs. And so a lot of this information has been compiled over years of working with those clients. So a big thing that I want to do is I had a huge response for this podcast, just because so many people are nurses or do work jobs that they just don't have the flexibility that some other people may have. And reaching their fitness goals seems very, very difficult. Now with this being a solo episode, You guys have missed out on something really fun of the Physique Development Podcast that I will bring into your life here. Don't you worry. We have a soundboard with sounds and they never use it, but we might play around with it today. I don't know what all of the buttons do. Um, But getting into it here, a few different things is because you are in a place where you do have limitations, not only about when you can eat, what you can eat, what time you have available, a biggest thing here is being able to make sure our nutrition is on track. So I'm also going to talk about tracking through night shift and what that looks like for workouts as well. So a big thing starting off is water is vital, of course, and so is sleep. Those are two things you might not be getting enough of. And I do understand that it does come with the job field to a certain degree, but making sure that you're prioritizing sleep where you can, as well as making sure you have as much water as possible. So uh, some things to keep in mind is being able to have some non-perishables at work. I also know with being a nurse that you're getting a a lot of extra food brought in, whether it be from patients or just different things being catered. And it's very normal to walk into the break room and there just be sweets everywhere laid out. So being able to have some quick and easy things. So let's say that you do not have time. So let's say you forget bringing food one day, you have some things in your locker that you're set to go. So you don't have to resort to the only food being available being those sweets. So keeping different non-perishables at work and or in your car is going to be extremely helpful because whether you're going to a shift or leaving a shift, you might be behind on food, you might be behind on time, and having those is always going to be helpful. In fact, I do this myself for my purse and my car, having these to go and my backpack so that I always have a snack on me. So things like rice cakes, tuna packets, minute rice, canned chicken, uh, protein bars, granola bars, peanut butter, prepackaged nuts, crackers, protein powder, oatmeal packs, all things that are going to be non-perishable. They do not not need a fridge or a freezer, you're able to have them and be good to go. Another thing is just having dense and fast things. When you're working, you might only have a few minutes to be able to eat your meal. So being able to have things like dried fruits, date, dried fruit, dates, trail mix and nuts um, are all going to be very helpful because they're going to be a little bit denser in calories and be able to pop them in and be able to keep rocking and rolling, which brings me into the topic of pocket snacks. So if you're not able to have your food on the floor in an easy, accessible place, being able to put them in your pocket so you always have something on you. Again, those quick things that you can just pop in your mouth and be able to get going. So it's something that nutrition is often the hardest part because you end up starving all day due to your schedule. And then you're in this place of I'm dead tired, but I need to get this food in, but I didn't have time to get it in. I don't want to cook. And then you're left with being exhausted and 
vibing for an easier option like fast food. Now with fast food, knowing that fast food is not inherently bad, I will say that again, fast food is not inherently bad. I am someone who is always looking for the net positive. If eating fast food is going to allow you to reach your goals and be able to do it with a little bit less stress and some more flexibility, I'd rather a client have fast food, um, making smart decisions while they're there than being in a place where they don't eat. Um, so with that, there is a fast food ebook on the physique development website, physiquedevelopment.com. And it's something that I put together a few years ago. It was actually inspired by my parents. I had taught them how to track macros. They were rocking and rolling, but they're real estate agents. Their schedule can change at the drop of a hat. And they're like, we love to cook at home. We love to eat at home, but sometimes it's just not possible whether a meeting runs late or I'm out with a client or I just had to change my whole entire schedule, but I need food in place. So that's a great option if you do need to eat out and have that in place. There's also a video on our YouTube channel on how to track macros um, for things that you might not know the macros for. So if you're eating at a cafeteria at your place of work, or again, at any of the restaurants that might be more chain restaurants, knowing how to navigate with tracking. So watching that video and possibly getting that fast food ebook would be a great, great option there. Another thing here is being able to pre-track. It's very helpful, especially with all the treats there. So you're already prepared. And maybe you do pre-track a space for a type of treat. So if it is there, you're able to have that in place with still having your other meals. Instead of it getting to a place where you're super duper hungry, that food is there. It's right in front of you. It's easy to grab. You grab it. Maybe you don't track till a few hours later, and then you realize that you've either surpassed your targets, or you have put yourself in a weird spot with your target. So pre-tracking is extremely helpful. And just having a plan, I can't say that enough, that having that plan is so extremely, extremely important. Because if you don't, I mean, you know the saying, if you, I, I can't even say the saying, I was about to say it wrong. But basically, if you fail to prepare, you're preparing to fail. I believe that's the saying. I, I tried to act like everyone knew it and then I couldn't even say it off the top of my head. But you know that planning ahead is always going to be helpful. I do it, especially when we travel of making sure, or if I'm out of routine, planning those things ahead. Because if I'm in routine, if I'm at home, if I have flexibility, I can make a lot of things work. But if I'm in something like if I'm traveling, I'm at the airport during the day, and I don't have a plan in place, that's normally when I'm like, oh my gosh, everything is miserable right now. So making sure that you're pre-tracking. So what you can do is um, the night before, before or the morning of being able to track things in your phone, um, in my fitness pal or whatever tracking app you use. And another way that you can go about this instead of tracking every single morsel, which might be beneficial if you are in a dieting phase or in prep, but if you are just trying to maintain and make sure you get the food that you need, what I often suggest is being able to have a template or an outline or bookend your day. So for example, I basically eat, there's two meals that I eat every day. And then the other two meals, meals rotate. So I always pre-track those first two meals so that I'm all good to go. I know what to expect. So then when it comes to the other two meals, I can plug them in and then move around whatever food I need to make sure I'm hitting what goals I need to. So you don't have to track your entire day, but possibly tracking one to three of your meals, um, maybe tracking a snack that you always have or always want to make space for or a treat you always want to make space for. For example, I not only love this snack in general, but it's also a great way to hit my fiber. I take a rice cake, put peanut butter on it, put raspberries on it, and then cinnamon and salt. I have that nearly every single day. That's always pre-tracked. So I always know that there's space for the peanut butter, there's space for the raspberries within my fiber, and I'm all set to go. The other thing here is being able to pack your lunch so you don't have to find time to go to the cafeteria or try to make something. It's already prepared and ready to go. Now with this, like I said, the non-perishable items are going to be super easy for you to have on hand, but also being able to have things that are already fully prepared and possibly able to eat cold. So you're just able to grab those out 
of the fridge and just eat them and be good to go. And if you have to stop eating it, like you get a call, you have to go somewhere, there's an emergency, you're able just to put the lid on, put it back in the fridge without being like, man, this heated up meal is just now going to go to waste. Um, so of course you can heat up your meals a hundred percent, but being able to have some things that you enjoy eating cold or easy to eat cold are a great option. Whether you have some yogurt stocked into the fridge and then you have the protein powder in your locker and you're able to mix those two together with whatever toppings you need, um, or you have a protein shake already in there. Or for example, I don't mind eating potatoes cold. So sweet potatoes. I like having sweet potatoes and chicken cold with some cinnamon on it. That's just me personally. I, I don't mind eating certain foods cold. So knowing what those foods look like for you so that you are all good to go. Some other quick things um, are like chicken sausages and using like slider buns and being able to throw those on there, just throw it in the microwave, you're all set to go. And then fruit, of course, is another very easy option to have in place. Another thing with your water intake is making sure you have a drink by your charting computer or shoving it in a cabinet next to you. I know within COVID regulations, um, I have clients that talk about how they're just not allowed to have water on the floor. And that is, of course, unfortunate. And I'm not going to sit there and just be like, well, do it anyway. So we have to follow certain rules. But if you are able to have it by a charting computer, if you are able to have it in a cubby near you, that's going to be best bet. A water bottle that you know is yours with a good lid on it, possibly a straw so that you're not having to use two hands as far as un, um, doing the top and then drinking it to, again, stay as mobile as possible. So I have a hydro flask. I absolutely love it. It's small enough that I don't feel like it's in everybody's face. If you're watching, this. I'm about to hold it up here. Uh, mine's 32 ounces. I have a boot on it. So since it's all metal, it's not super loud as I'm setting it down. It also has a straw on it, which is great. And then it's insulated so it doesn't sweat because I hate when water bottles sweat. And then of course, as a nurse, you might not want to have different uh, just dewy substances on your hand as you're trying to get through your day. Some other examples for those car snacks or um, pocket snacks or your locker snacks are going to be things like bananas, um, yogurt, oatmeal, shakes, breakfast sandwich. Um, and again, things that you can eat super duper easy. So sandwiches are great options or anything that are going to be handheld. Um, so a few things like that that you could make in bulk and to be able to save yourself some time is freezer sandwiches. You can make a lot of those in bulk. Just throw them in your freezer so you don't have to buy them. You know exactly what's in them. They can fit your macros, whatever you need, so that you just are able to microwave it and then have it handheld as you're walking out the door. You don't have to worry about like sitting down and eating something and then spilling it in your car or whatever that may be. So sandwiches and like wraps and burrito type things um, that are going to be super super duper easy. I know a few nurses that do like um, these egg wraps or they'll use the, or their waffle maker um, to cook their eggs and or waffles in and like roll it up um, and then just have it in a little um, aluminum foil so they're able to just carry it around and be good to go. So you can even do that with pancakes and waffles, like I said, to be able to eat them with one hand and be set to go. Um, so if you are night shift, Let's get into that a little bit. So one big thing here is sleep is so important. Like you have to make sure that your recovery is in the absolute best spot. As a nurse, you might think like, okay, if I want to reach my fitness goals, I basically have to run myself into the ground. And while it might feel like that some ways, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it and say, oh, it's easy. Just get it done. First, you might roll your eyes because you're like, Sue, I know you're not a nurse, but you also might be thinking like, I, I just feel like it shouldn't be this hard or it should be a little bit harder, possibly, whatever your mindset is thinking here. But just being able to walk through a few things as far as working out on night shift and tracking macros on night shift. So all my third shift workers, listen up. So a few ways that you can go about this. One way to do it is to begin your eating around 10 a.m. on your first day and track until 1 a.m. at work the following morning. And that count as one day. Maybe you have a small snack at 4 a.m 
them and you count that either towards that day or the next day, you can kind of decide depending on how it fits into your macros or possibly you eat a small snack before you go to bed when you get home around eight. If you are eating that right before bed, um, when you get home at eight, I would possibly start tracking that towards the next day. So being able to have like 10 a.m. until like one or 2 a.m. and then being able to start the next day at like four or five or six a.m. and then being able to track that towards the next. Um, So being able, even though you haven't gone to bed yet, it'll be a macro rollover. So one thing important here is you do not have to strictly stay from midnight to midnight. It's something that you are on an abridged schedule. So your rules don't follow what other people's rules are. This is something I had to really hound in to one of my clients who's night shift of she was trying to maintain a normal schedule while being on night shift. That is not realistic. And it's something that I get I or I understand how difficult it can be when you're like, well, I want to do things on my days off. I want to be social. I want to do X, Y, and Z. I want to get back to a normal schedule, which you possibly can if you work multiple night shifts in a row and then you have multiple days that you can get back on a normal quote unquote schedule, but also giving yourself some grace. If your schedule is different than someone else's, that's okay. There's plenty of people that have vastly different schedules from me. It doesn't mean that they're doing something wrong. I'm doing something right. It just means we have different schedules. So not holding yourself to a certain standard, being able to make the new standard what your schedule is, is going to be extremely important. So let's say you have back-to-back shifts. It's going to be the same concept of tracking until 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., finishing. um, And then if you are If you had the night off before and you're going into a night shift, you can finish your meals around 9 p.m. so you can get back to sleep and then be able to start your meals over. Another way to do this is to track two days as one. So in my fitness pal, obviously it has like each day labeled out in a new one. What you could do because you let's say that you have your night shift and whether you're going into another night shift the next night or you have the next day off, again, you're not in that normal 12 to 12 window of eating. So what you can do is track both days as one day and try to hit your macros combined. So let's say that your macros are 100 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs, and 50 grams of fat. I'm going for easy math here. Um, that, That would make it that you're going for 200 grams of protein, 400 grams of carbs, 100 grams of fat on that one day that you're tracking so that you're not stuck in this place again. Let's say that you need the food either to have the energy to stay up to be alert or you're just extremely hungry and then you're going to be sleeping most of the next day. You're not held to this standard of, oh my gosh, this was one day and I needed to hit these macros. It's okay. We're going for the, again, we're going for the net more than anything. So when we're looking at macros in general, and this is kind of where like refeeds come into place as well, or high and low days is we're looking at the week. We're not just looking at the seldom day. We're looking at the full week. So you can use these two days and track them as one because we are looking at the week as a whole instead of just looking at, okay, I'm looking at one day and I need to hit everything in that one day. Um, because what I don't want clients to do is be on a shift, be hungry, um, or get caught up in finishing all of their food before midnight when it's like, it might have been better for you just to call it, go to sleep, wake up and start eating again, instead of trying to stay up to finish your macros. Now for workouts on night shift, if you're doing back to back nights, I would highly suggest to plan rest days. If you have to go to the gym, I would wake up around 3 p.m. or, um, a few hours before your shift and train like three to four and then be able to eat and go into your shift from there. Um, But I would highly recommend if you can rest to go ahead and rest and never... I guess I shouldn't say never or talk in extremes, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend not to try to work out or do cardio directly after a night shift. You have just been up for so many hours and you have been doing so many things. And again, rest is honestly more important 90% of the time. So instead of being in this place where you're like, I need to go straight to the gym, I need to get this done. What I always ask myself, and I even asked myself this yesterday of, hey, is it going to be better for me to go ahead and call it a day, 
go to sleep and train tomorrow than try to force myself to train, be tired, mentally not there, not giving my all in that workout possibly, and then um, pushing that exhaustion even further so it's harder to recover from and then falling asleep. Um, So you kind of have to be able to ask yourself and be able to know the difference between making an excuse versus realizing when you truly do need to rest. It's something that I have learned over the past few years tenfold that rest is the most important thing and it's the most overlooked thing. I would say stress management and um, recovery and rest are a slash sleep are the two most overlooked things within someone's fitness journey. They, those not only help with weight loss, they help with muscle gain, they help with regulating your whole entire body. So those are extremely important things to um, to watch out for. Now, when it comes to... Um, sleeping, I would highly recommend first, there's an article on the physique development website going over some tips to optimize your sleep. But especially if you're working night shift, being able to have blackout blinds, as well as being able to have conversations if you live with other people. I know that might sound pretty obvious of like, oh, yeah, I should let someone know what my schedule is. But it's something where I see a lot of nurses take on the burden of having an adjusted schedule and trying to not make it difficult for anyone else, where that's very admirable but it is something where you do need to be able to vocalize different things to people of what your days look like or what to expect or when you do need that sleep because someone might not truly understand what's happening within your schedule. So it's even something for me where I'll give a, a vocalization of like, hey, I got a lot going on today, or I need these times to myself, or I need X, Y, and Z um, to Alex to make sure he's aware of what that looks like. It's the same concept, especially with being on an adjusted schedule. Um, Or even if you are working day shift and just need some extra space for yourself, vocalizing that to a partner or anyone that you live with. But blackout shades are going to be extremely helpful or being able to wear um, like the sleep eye covers um, so that you're able able to get that darkness in play. And again, I would highly recommend um, reading that article on the physique development website about sleep for some different tips for optimizing your sleep as a whole. Um, And then water is extremely vital, like I talked about. But when it comes to weighing yourself, so if you are, again, following that 12 to 12 rule, you don't have to follow that. So always sleep before you weigh in. Never, and I could very clearly say never on this, weigh yourself if you have not fallen asleep. Because that would be like not weighing yourself in the morning on a normal day and then being like, oh, I forgot. Let me weigh myself after I've had all my food, done all the things I need to do for a day and weigh myself. Even if it might be the morning and you're thinking I need this morning weigh-in, it's not an accurate weigh-in and there is zero reason to step on the scale at that time. If you have worked a night shift, do not come home and step on the scale. Fall asleep, go to sleep, have a night of sleep, then you can wake up and get on the scale there. So it's also something that if you're in prep, if you're working with a coach, if you have certain goals for yourself, making sure you're vocalizing what your schedule is like to your coach. Um, It's something that I always ask my clients kind of what their schedule is, what to expect from them. So I can also give them flexibility within their check-in days, as well as giving them flexibility within the way that their schedule is laid out and being able to give them recommendations for when they should train and such. So you may not need those specific recommendations, but always making sure your coach is aware of kind of where things are at. If you're working a night shift, what that looks like within your day-to-day life. So some other quick suggestions here um, is to always eat before your night shift so that you're all set to go. You have one good meal in you. That's one last thing you have to pack. Um, You can always take a lap if you are tired to re-energize yourself or offer to help someone else with one of their duties. Um, crock pot meals are going to be so helpful for you. Um, so you can do again, some meal prep of some freezer crock pot meals, which is always a great, great option, which you can spend a few hours putting together all of the frozen Ziploc bags. Um, and so then you're set to go. You can just pull it out of the freezer, dump it in the crock pot and be on your merry way to work, come home and have that meal ready or being able to trust someone that you live with to dump a bag into the crock pot and start it. Um, so those Those are things that I always use within my crazy life and are extremely helpful for you all as well. 
Another thing is going to be stress management. I know to a certain degree, there are stresses stresses, and stressors that you cannot necessarily control, but anything that you can control, being very aware of that. If you're stressed about hitting food, pre-plan it. That's no longer a quote unquote stressor anymore. If you're stressed about uh, different aspects of your job, being able to figure out, okay, why are those causing stress? What do I need to do to be able to show up for myself as well as to show up for these patients? Um, yoga is going to be another great thing, especially because your body is going through the ringer. Um, every nurse that I have is getting tons of steps, is moving and grooving. And depending on what kind of care you work in, you could be lifting people, moving people around, and again, be hunched over in different aspects. So yoga, especially yin yoga or restorative yoga, is going to be extremely helpful for making sure that you are recovering, making sure that you're managing stress, and also helping within your posture and flexibility so that you are in the absolute best spot. Um, and then within the crock pot is kind of on the same vein is make sure you have dinner ready when you get home. I can say that nothing stinks more than being so hungry, being so tired, and then coming home and food not being ready and then just sitting there and being like, what should I eat? So whether you have quick things ready for meal prep um, or you've done the crock pot or if you live with someone, they have something ready or you stop to get fast food on the way home, whatever it may be, making sure that you have a plan for that meal when you get home. So um, the big things here are prioritizing recovery, um, prioritizing water intake, prioritizing sleep, and then some helpful tips for how to navigate around um, some of those different situations as well. Then the last things I'm going to talk about through here are going to be quick things for meal prep. I've already mentioned some of these, but I'm just going to go through a few more. So uh, microwave rice is super duper easy. If you have the opportunity, of course, the shelf stable one is great or shelf stable like cashew or almond milk is great again, because it's shelf stable. Um, but the best microwave rice I feel is the Trader Joe's frozen rice, but you do have to leave it frozen. So it does kind of add a layer of something else but it is one of the best in my opinion. Any kind of pre-made protein. So Tyson has frozen and refrigerated options for grilled chicken. I used to stock this in my freezer all the time. Um, if you do not want to use something that's pre-packaged like that, I often will do one of two things. One, I will just buy chicken or ground beef or something and just throw it in the freezer where it's raw. Then when I'm ready to use it, I can de-thaw it. You can actually also cook it and then throw it in the freezer. So I do that often. And then the other one on that same vein is when I am super duper busy, I either can't get to the store to buy chicken to even throw it in the crock pot, whatever it may be, or even if I do buy it, I don't have time to cook it, being able to go to a store or a local restaurant and be able to get grilled chicken from them. So um, I go to a restaurant called Core Life. Um, you can do it from many other restaurants as well um, because they have just grilled chicken on their menu. It's great grilled chicken and it's literally just done on the grill, super duper easy, nothing extra added. And I'll get five pounds of that grilled. I'll take half of it and put it in the fridge to use and the other half I'll put it in a bag and put it in the freezer so that I'm all set to go once I finish up the chicken that I do have. Another great option is rotisserie chicken. Um, if you are going to wanting or if you're wanting to cut back on fat, you can take the skin off. Although I know sometimes the skin is the best part, but rotisserie chicken are already pulled chicken. So I know stores like Fresh Time. Um, and then I believe stores like uh, Whole Foods also have again, that already pre pulled chicken sitting in containers ready to go. And then things like Whole Foods also have just a lot of sides and dishes that you can grab um, and be able to stock in your fridge or freezer as well. Um, so like I said, the, the stores like Fresh Time and Sprouts was the other one I was thinking of. Might have that pre-shredded chicken or being able to use deli meat um, as well. And then my Kroger also has meats by the deli meats that are pre-cooked that are all good to go. And then they sometimes have the hot meals. So if your store does carry anything like Home Chef, so our Kroger carries Home Chef, not only the ones that you can make um, like from scratch, they have the ones that are oven ready that you just pop in the oven. Um, so those could be great to have on hand when you get home from work. But then they also have a few that are just heat and eat, which are great, great options. And whenever thing, things get really busy for us, we always grab those heat and eat ones. Um, another option for that is if you want to utilize a meal prep company, 
Alex and I really enjoy Megafit, and I know Austin has had the Megafit ones as well. Um, and they're just great because you can get a la carte, so you could just order like a pound of bison. Um, you can build your own custom meals so that they fit your macros and you're all set to go. And then they have their signature meals. So those are always great. We use them a lot when we travel, or again, when I get super busy, I do not have time to cook. Being able to have those stocked in my fridge um, so that I am not at a loss about what's happening and everyone can reheat them in the microwave as needed. Um, some other easy options are things like rice cakes. They're a very, very, very easy carb source, again, that are non-perishable um, outside of things like fruits, um, like bananas and apples that store within their own skin because those are super easy to have on hand. Of course, they are perishable, but they are great to just store in your car or in your locker for the week and have them in place. I know I've mentioned tuna packets or tuna cans. Tuna, uh, they have a ton of flavors now. You can eat it with microwave rice. You can put it on a rice cake. You can make a tuna salad out of it. You can do a million things with that. Um, And then, like I said, the crock pot freezer meals are always great to have in hand, or I normally have a few freezer options always on hand in case I run into an issue you where I'm out of food. Um, So like Trader Joe's has some good, uh, I think they're chicken chili lime burgers. Um, I'll grab those and I'll normally have a few of those in our freezer and different like freezer meals so that I'm all set to go if I run out of something that I know there's something in my freezer, freezer vegetables, whatever it may be, I have it ready to go. Um, Peanut butter is great to have for easy fats or having olive oil or avocado oil on hand um, and just having that in your locker or coconut oil so that you know that you can always have a fat source if you need it. Um, And then the freezer aisle in general. So um, veggies, they have whole meals, they have carb sources. The Bird's Eye brand has a veggie pasta that you can add that Tyson chicken to. Um, Bird's Eye also has a protein blend um, that has corn, black beans, and some miscellaneous things that are great. And I use a lot of freezer veggies in general just to be able to dump and go and be able to have them on hand and not have to worry about them um, rotting or wasting food because I hate that. Um, And then eggs and toast are always a pretty simple option and you can do a lot of different things within eggs. Um, And then the other thing I would mention is just one day when you have more time to walk slowly through the store and gather some ideas of what you can do in a pinch um, as far as like those tuna packets or if you see something in the freezer aisle or I could possibly be mentioning something that you really love and aren't, um, you don't think about it, but then when you walk through the grocery store, you're able to see kind of where everything lies. So that was a quick 30 to 40 minutes going over nursing and night shift and some helpful tips. I really hope that this was helpful for you guys. I always have a soft spot in my heart for anyone who has a job that's a little bit unconventional or unconventional hours. And I know it's very easy to get into the mindset of, I just can't make it work, or this is too hard to make it work. And And I will say that when I used to work on my feet for multiple hours a day, the last thing I wanted to do was go to the gym afterwards or possibly eat something that I had to stand and cook for even longer. So any way that you can make things a little bit easier on yourself, ways that you can communicate to people in your life about what you need from them so you can show up as the best instead of carrying a burden that you don't need to carry. You're already doing so much within your job and being able to show up for yourself in a different aspect and really thinking about that gym time as not like, oh my gosh, I need to get to the gym after I've been on my feet all this time, but more so of I need some time for myself to focus on myself. Um, I'm giving my time to so many people throughout the day and the gym is going to be that time that I have for myself to give to myself. So The last note that I'll make before I sign off is just realize that you are exerting a lot of energy throughout the day to give yourself some grace as well. Your results might follow a different path than other people that you follow or other people that you know. And that is completely okay because again, your life, your job, your needs are completely different than them. So I would highly encourage you not to compare what your life looks like or exactly what your progress looks like or sitting there thinking like, oh, if I just didn't have this. Sorry, if I wasn't working this shift, things would be a lot easier because they might be, but 
If you can't change it, then there's no reason to sit there and be uber frustrated about it. So if you have any other questions about how to navigate around night shift, I highly encourage you email admin at physiquedevelopment.com so we can either answer them on this podcast, make a post or a resource for you all or an article or get you an, a straight answer from that email to make sure that you're all set to go because here at Physique Development, we really want to make sure that we're giving a, advice, we're giving space for people to reach their goals that they might have thought that otherwise they couldn't. So that's all that I have from you today on the Physique Development Podcast. And hopefully you enjoyed listening to just me, although I just realized I forgot to use all my sound effects. I am sorry if that just burst your earlobes, but have a great day and stay tuned for the next episode.